says is that the uh, project Davis then unfortunately has risen from what the previous months 14.4 to 15.3 million. And that's because of the recognition of a shortfall mainly in technical services even. Um, as we're developing and understanding the figures better. So we're, we're confirming what suspicions were that income did not come to the level of our budgeted for. And that is that, that's a reflection which results in that movement. Uh, I'd, I'd like to then move you on to page seven. Um, in response to the problems, uh, the council on the 6th of September introduced the freeze. And what we've done, as you can see in paragraphs 218 to 220, is uh, work up how the scheme works. And we're setting out you know, in these three paragraphs the process because we're going to make this explicit and transparent. The consequences of that process for the first two weeks of that freeze, uh, the details of which are set out in appendix 8. Uh, so the whole of the freeze process, the beginnings of it, is, is fully available for the public to have a look at. Uh, there's therefore a recommendation of those lines, um, which is at 12.2. And we do agree that about uh, just over a million pounds worth of the projected items uh, are agreed and the results of technical balances um, to help defray the bills. Uh, Thanks very much, Peter. Okay, I just wanted to make a, a few comments uh, after the pause to invite uh, the cabinet colleagues to. I mean, clearly, um, we need to continue to bear down on the overspend. Um, 15.3 million uh, is a slight improvement on the, um, on the 70 million we started off with, but it's still serious enough that I think we need to continue the discipline that we've introduced in terms of the spending freeze. Um, I believe that is the responsible thing to do. With, uh, the information that we've got. Um, as we sort of discussed at uh, at Infinitum, I believe, on Monday at the council meeting, um, it is important that we make this process transparent. So I'm really pleased that we've got all of the recommendations around the um, the uh, items that we've considered thus far in, in Act Eight on page 34, um, which which sets out the clear terms, the how we. Um, or how uh, each of the items will be categorised. Uh, I'm not happy, but I think we've got to um, make those decisions. Because we've got to continue to drive down uh, as far as we can the, um, the overspend. Again, just to reiterate the point about the neighbourhood um, uh, grants for the three million, um, they have not been cut, they have been suspended. I think, again, that's a responsible thing to do until we make sure that we can make the books balance. Um, uh, I think we've, we've said very clearly that we want to uh, be in a position where we can make a clear decision on that, but I think we've still got to remain vigilant um, uh, a level of um, overspend. We've had a nice one who just discussed the, the, um, uh, the residential care fees, which was actually increase that because of the option to would cost them in the region seven hundred and fifty seven thousand which we'd have to find from um, uh, that's growth that we haven't budgeted for so that would add to the problem so I think that just illustrates the fact that we've got to keep the pressure on. Um, I'm really pleased that there's an item later on in the agenda around um, the local transport uh, sustainable transport fund where we're able to uh, do something immediately on, on road, road safety which uh, is a theme of the neighbourhood uh, perhaps. But you know, I think the, the message from the cabinet is that we all regard these neighbourhood as really important, but equally we've got a, a very big budget challenge for this year. We all know the, the budget challenge as well for the next three years, which is a uh, hundred million third of our budgets. One of the things I'd, I'd like to do, I'm going to circulate this in a second, is move a, a slightly more detailed resolution than, than is printed on the 
before because um, whilst I think this is a really helpful uh, report and I, I welcome the, the additional rigour and the new rigour if you like that this is introduced into the budget process, I think I, I just wanted to put records straight really because I know there was a number of um, uh, a number of publications I've seen which, claim, which is claiming that the entire overspend has just been um, uh, developed and generated within the six months of this financial year. Now, anybody who saw the, um, I think the head of the briefing note that piece circulated to all members will know that a large you know, part of the problem is due to a 14.6 million overspend which we've inherited from last year. So I, I think it's really important to, to, to make that clear. Uh, there was some um, uh, obfuscation on Monday night. Use that term. Um, and I think the, the other thing to, uh, to highlight, uh, which you've highlighted, Peter, from your report, which I think is absolutely right, is that we need to make sure that the budget going forward is sound. We need to make sure that um, if we set the savings targets and the income targets, they're realistic and achievable. Uh, and I welcome the work that you're doing.
Meadows for the Capital Staff and Andy. Um, again, I think this is a really helpful report. The, um, the element that I'm particularly keen to make sure that we are um, focused on is the particularly the 48.8 million of new unsupported borrowing because that has potential revenue costs of 4.9 million. So if we can um, if we can take any action to uh, address that unsupported borrowing, that will help with our revenue position um, and that will help with our potential overspend on revenue um, uh, budget. So I think that is really important we do that. Um, so uh, again, I think uh, welcome the, uh, the list of, of schemes that are included in Appendix 2 um, around the, the freeze on capital um, and the review that we've done. And uh, yeah, the PPs picked up the um, uh, rejected schemes to open 326,100, which should be uh, the figure in, in recommendation 12.2.
social class is <coughs> important for us to support the patients. Jeff, I come back. Yes, so the answer is exactly what I did. I just felt that it would be perhaps a good idea if we at least recorded in the minutes that we had noticed that this particular element of the um, uh, uh, report is not quite as, uh, as, um, as happy as we want to be. But we'll, we'll um, uh, do, do, do we know recommendations, approved recommendations? Yes. Approved recommendations of the Audit Risk Management Committee of the 19th of September. Is that agreed? Okay, yeah. thank you very much. Uh, so that then takes us on to um, security and transport issues. So item 12 is the local sustainable trans transport fund, section of the major bid funding. Uh, Mark, I think you're introducing this, please. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you, Jeff. Um, Members, uh, members will be aware from uh, certainly from previous reports of the uh, the local sustainable transport fund that was launched by central government back in 2011. Uh, you'll recall that uh, essentially there's been a two-stage application process with the Department for Transport, <coughs> whereby first of all Merseyside were successful in securing what we call key component funding. And that's meant around about £800,000 coming into Wirral. And over the past 12 months or so, we've, uh, we've had a program of, uh, of delivering various things using that money. The purpose of this report is really the, the, the good news now that the Merseyside partnership has been successful in securing uh, just under £20 million across Merseyside to continue with this program of, of, of delivering and implementing these kind of measures. Uh, in terms of what that means for Wirral, you'll see at the bottom of page 214 a breakdown there, and actually we're getting round about, or just over £3 million in practice this year and over the next two years, just over a million pounds in revenue and a couple of million pounds in capital. In terms of the, uh, the detailed programme uh, and what we're actually proposing to do with that, if I can just refer the members to page 216, section 3.6, section uh, 3.6, you'll see a uh, you'll see a number of headings there. Really, just giving an overview of the kind of uh, the kind of projects that we're looking to deliver. Just in summary, the, uh, the first three areas, which are walking and cycling infrastructure, uh, uh, walking and cycling promoting the visitor economy and highway network improvements, they are essentially looking at using the, uh, the capital funding that we're getting through the fund. And there's some description there as to what they're actually about. What the report actually says is that uh, it's really looking for cabinet to delegate authority to the cabinet member and party spokespersons, really just to finalise the detail of the programme. We've really had to do that for a number of practical reasons. Obviously, we've just received the funding. We need to very quickly work up exactly what we can do with the money. And obviously, we need to get the money spent by the end of March. So we've had to adopt a fairly pragmatic approach to that. But I'm very pleased to say that in discussion with Councillor Smith, our cabinet member, and then earlier on in the week with party spokesperson, we've actually uh, agreed a draft program, obviously subject to, to cabinet being happy this evening. And then really the revenue aspect of the programme, which is uh, one of the sections four and five, talks about business travel support for community travel hub and maxi taxi. And essentially what they're about is focusing on the East Wirral area. It's all about working with some of the big employers and also with some of the, the communities in those areas, particularly those people who have been out of employment for a long period of time trying to break those transport barriers down and various outreach projects to actually get people back into work and give them some assistance to actually identify transport, personal transport solutions to do that. So, so really, Chair, that's, uh, that's just an overview uh, of the programme. Uh, I'm looking for Cabinet uh, to first of all approve the acceptance of the grant just to authorise the interim director to do the final negotiations of the funding agreement should be a fairly straightforward job with a very similar agreement to what we had in place for the key component money. Uh, and really just to delegate authority to the, the cabinet member to finalise the programme. And I think just
just on a, on a final point, Chair, obviously earlier on this evening you made a reference to uh, obviously sort of the pressures around neighbourhood grants. You know, this, this is really good news for us. It's much needed external grant that's coming into the council. You'll all remember that earlier on in the year you approved an LTP programme and that programme was partly DFT grant but also partly council unsupported money, its own money. So there's obviously been a, it's fair to say, a bit of a question mark against that overall programme. One of the things that this does in, pro, in practice, it brings in that much needed money into the LTP area uh, and it really does help to, uh, you know, to kind of safeguard some of those important funds, for example, with the money that was in the LTP programme and things like area for and safety and things like that. Have to take any questions? <coughs> Thanks very much, Mark. Um, oh. I'll bring you in a sec, Harry. Adrian, I think you need to take some. Yes, I'll well, we'll do very briefly. Mark, I'm genuinely confused about one thing. Um, I, I know that in the specific case of the Wright Street traffic calming, a decision was made. But I know, it's entirely confusion on my part, I'm now not sure whether that would have to go back to Area Forum to be asked for, or whether that particular scheme is already in progress. So um, I, I don't expect you to give an answer right now necessarily, but could you um, make sure that we do get the answer on that? I'll send you an email if you want. Yeah. Just, well, just, just as a general point, obviously earlier on in the year, uh, we've, we've certainly met with most of the area forums to talk about uh, you know, road safety improvements and schemes that could be done in their areas. Um, obviously we've had some discussions and ideas so far, I think obviously there's been quite a few changes, so there would certainly be a need for technical services to go back to the area forums and actually engage with them, really to check if what their views are, if they want to continue with the same kind of schemes, or if they've got different ideas on what kind of things they'd like to see introduced. The reason that I raised it is because the next area forum will be is February. So if we wanted to go ahead with that, I presume we need to have some mechanism to get back to you quickly. I mean, I, what I would ask is um, that uh, maybe Mark, you, you, you can, I think, come out how you can uh, consult fairly speedily with the you area. Know, I, I don't know whether that means a special meeting or whether there's another mechanism, but I think uh, we, can't, we can't wait until February. I think we're going to get this, get this uh, uh, program.
is you know, 20,000 pounds in their area for them, who, if they so wish, could spend that money now on 20 mile an hour schemes or other road safety measures. Um, so there should be no delay now in getting that vital investment, that extra investment, in, in improving road safety in every area for them in the world. And I think that's really good news. Um, so, um, can, I, can I ask you to agree those recommendations with that additional six of Harry's move? That is very good. Okay, thank you very much. Right, um, so that takes us to agenda item 13, which is the Highways and Engineering Services Contract Management and Award Action Plan. Sergius. Thank you, Mr.
Burdens are supported by the Schools Forum, which met on the 25th of September. And prior to that, there was uh, a number of meetings with governing bodies um, and with various representative head teacher groups. Um, the, the final report must be submitted to the Education Funding Agency by the 31st of October, October 2012. Um, I'm, I'm, by way of introduction, it's a very in depth report. Uh, I'm going to try and give some high level uh, pointers throughout it. Um, the model is to produce a national funding system which is fair, simple, and more consistent. Um, and the changes which we're going to introduce next year are to simplify and reduce the number of allowable factors that allocate funding to schools, have a single lump sum payment for primary and secondary schools, to remove the grant distribution in the formula and replace it with allowable elements. Delegate funding for additional services to schools, such as maternity costs, and to introduce perhaps one of the most significant changes, Place Plus, as the basis for funding to special schools and basics. Um, some schools will gain, compared to the current formula, and some will lose, and further delegation may either exacerbate or moderate the impact of the changes. However, it is important to say. Uh, that the minimum funding guarantee will safeguard against excessive turbulence over the next few years. We're going to start by just looking at some headlines of the mainstream formula changes. Um, there are a number of formula factors that uh, will no longer be allowed, and these are actually listed in the report. Um, there will only be one single lump sum which will be permitted. Uh, there's currently an element of historic school grants which distributes about £30 million. And this element will no longer be permitted, and this funding will be allocated broadly in line with the new formula, so evening out some of the um, discretionary spend that was in place previously. A number of services uh, can be delegated to schools, to schools from April 2013. Um, the Schools Forum actually did not agree uh, that a sixth form element should be included in the mainstream funding formula. Uh, but it was agreed that the new formula would include a cap on schools who gain from the changes. And the proposed mainstream formula changes are set out in paragraph 5 of the report. Just turning then to special schools and inclusion based formula changes, um, just to start off with the most significant change is that there's a, a move to a more pupil led funding system with an element that's place led. So currently schools get funding for the number of places, whether they're filled or not. And in future, all places in all specialist provision will receive the base level of funding plus a top-up based on a per-pupil basis. Uh, so schools and bases will experience changes based on the number and needs of pupils. Uh, resource provision in mainstream schools will receive place plus funding in future. Um, there is an agreement, an agreement schools forum, to use the minimum funding guarantee for the first transitional year to provide stability. Um, it's agreement to a banking model approach uh, to top-ups, and the working parties to be set up to consider this. Uh, in future, top-ups will be used to fund each pupil over numbers. And the Education Funding Agency is proposing a two-year cycle to determine future changes in the number of planned places. And our local approach will be integrated uh, with the Education Funding Agency arrangements. And 6.6 .6 actually sets out uh, the formalisation of temporary adjustments, uh, which take account of the number of attending schools that are listed and are supported by the schools forum. So there are some adjustments that have been uh, made permanent in that paragraph. There are proposed changes to the delegation of SEM support uh, in mainstream schools. And paragraph 7 summarises the proposed changes for people uh, with high needs and special supervision. So it's recommended that cabinets agree to proceed with the proposals described for mainstream uh, school funding and that cabinets agree to the place changes in main maintained specialist provision. Thank you. Thanks.
forum, the CD agreement that was, was brought about there. Um, I, I do think it, it is a difficult time when you're changing the formula and that, and to have got the kind of agreement that, that we did with, with, with all schools, and that includes academies and the special schools, was, was good. I think the minimum uh, funding guarantee is important to, you know, to stop any kind of turbulence over the, over the coming years and that. Um, I, I can just uh, reiterate again that it's a, it's a good piece of work um, and it's the kind of way I think we, we should be uh, sort of working with our schools and with, with, with other partners and that. So there's very little else I can add to Fine, okay, well I think um, I'm, I'm really pleased that the, the, um, the schools forum has been able to work kind of collectively on this because it sounds like um, it's, it's been a, a very um, useful productive discussion that, they, that took place in the office. I couldn't be there, but uh, Tony, you can be in there and we can talk back on, on the meeting. So, um, it's, but it's, because it's quite a difficult, I guess it's quite a difficult uh, area because there'll be kind of winners and losers from the, uh, the way that the kind of new formula comes out. But it does seem as though that we've got you know, a broad consensus on how it's going to um, be uh, implemented in the world. Okay, so can we, um, we're being asked to agree to receive the proposal described in the report for mainstream school funding and high needs provision and agree to place changes in maintaining special provision detail in the report. So can we agree those recommendations? Agree. Okay, thank you very much. Right, um, we've dealt with item 15, uh, please residential nursing home. I'm not aware of any other urgent business. So 